another amazing day at fmtraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'm here with the amazing Calvin Moseman, uh, here to discuss specifically today about uh, containers, kind of in general for beginners and FileMaker. Always a fun subject. Uh, I hope that, real quick, blah, blah, blah. I hope you all have a lovely Friday. Uh, real quick, a reminder that we stream on three platforms. We stream on YouTube, we stream on Discord, and we stream on Twitch. I follow all those conversations. Big part of our point of doing these live streams is to help like encourage the community, have the community ask questions, and improve the depth of their own knowledge. Uh, please ask us questions. I love getting them answered or helping them get answered. I don't actually answer any questions, but Calvin does. I love forwarding them to Calvin so he can answer them. So, uh, please do that. We greatly appreciate it. Real quick, I'm going to cover the schedule for this week. Okay, so Friday, rather than the end of the next week. Friday's going to be FileMaker Canadians for Beginners. Monday is going to be Searches Without Fine Mode and FileMaker, also with the lovely, wonderful Calvin. Uh, Tuesday is going to be a news recap. Wednesday and Thursday are both going to be, actually, and Friday, are Nick days. Wednesday is going to finish off the ASCII table with Nick, which should be really interesting. And then Thursday and Friday are going to be day one and day two of his code and character functions on FileMaker series. So that should be really interesting. Uh, we got a full busy week. We also have in the future um, a 30-day CRM that's going to build a FileMaker CRM in 30 days. It starts May 16th. That should be a really fun adventure for people. So feel free to stop by to that. It'll be during this time slot. It should be interesting. But until then, we've got our usual collection of random stuff that we bring up and hope that people find use with. So real quick, if you would like to support the channel, feel free to get one of our Learning FileMaker annual subscriptions. Uh, the complete Learning FileMaker bundle, the Learning FileMaker video only training bundle, both are 100 plus hours of intense video content, very uh, interactive, covers pretty much every topic in FileMaker. The, okay, not every. <laughs> we don't cover like in depth, super in depth API stuff, but actually in the FileMaker platform, we talk about pretty much everything FileMaker Pro, Go, WebDirect, uh, deploy in the sense of both cloud and server. We have a variety of presenters, Calvin is one of the presenters in, uh, in the. Um, training, I believe, as it's Jacob Taylor, Nick, Richard, of course, talks his way through most of it, you know, how entertaining Richard is. So, feel free to buy that to support us. If you already have bought to support us, we greatly appreciate it. And also, you get a lot of training out of it. So, uh, <laughs> just a one-way sort of random donation street. Uh, so, we greatly appreciate if you did that. And with that being said, I say we get started. So, what are we doing today, Calvin? So today we're looking at container fields. We're going to start with uh, just an introduction to what they are and then uh, go in and, and look at some of the details and things you can do with them and some of the options you have. So let's switch to a screen share and I'll start sh uh, showing what we have here. I've got this uh, demo file. I'll open that up. and. So here's our container field. Now, a container, if you're not um, familiar with what that is, it's almost like a, it's a field that can hold a file, uh, like an attach. You might think of it as an attachment. Sometimes we call it attachments in an app. And it allows you to take a PDF, an image, a video, any, any, any file, uh, FileMaker files, an FMP12 file, and put those into a field and have it saved for the future. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, file manage database and we will look at some of the options for creating this. So here is, I, I started already and built this. So we have a field, I'm just calling it container, but we can call it whatever we want. And we have uh, different uh, file type options and, or field type options and so command R gives us the container and we have it already set up to a container. But what I want to focus on as we're in the manage database area is the options. And here on the options we've got uh, some of these are obviously uh, disabled the creation and modification information that doesn't really make, a sen make sense to have in here. You can still use the value from last visited record. You can even use a calculation a look and a lookup. As those are options, but usually where we focus a lot of our attention is in the storage area and how we want to store uh, the container. By default, you, could, you would have it stored uh, internally in the FMP12 file, but you can also uh, have an option to store externally. So we'll come back and look at this and visit, uh, that, uh, visit some other options as well. If it's stored globally, 
then um, you can't store it externally. Ex uh, the uh, global, it doesn't allow you to do that. So I'm going to cancel out of here and kind of show a, a few things with the, it's going to ask me if I want to transfer. There's nothing to transfer, so it won't transfer over. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, container field, and I'm going to insert a picture in here. So uh, here's a picture of Richard and I at DevCon uh, a couple years ago. And anyway, so, so we've got this image here in the container, and this is saved in the FMP12 file. I'm not sure it, let's go ahead and open up. That's not the one that I want. Uh, this one, we'll see that the size is 2.9 megabytes. And if I delete this, we should see that change. I might have to close this and open it up again. Uh, or not. Maybe that image is just really small. The So this is 11 megabytes. Let me go back and put that in here. And so we should see, when I close this up, OK, so now you'll see the size of the file jumped to 18.2 megabytes because this image is so large. So that's an internally stored container. It, uh, it, it's increasing the f size of the FMP12 file. And this can be, and this can cause some problems in performance. So generally, we don't store uh, the image or the files internally. And so the way to change that, we go to File, Manage, uh, uh, Database, open up our options, and we can say store uh, uh, data externally. Let's start with um, secure storage. And it's going to take the database location and put that under a, a subfolder called RCC Container Demo number one. We'll say OK. It's going to tell me, does it want to change it? We'll say OK. We'll, change, we'll, we'll make that transfer. It said one out of one was moved. And let's go ahead and look at what happened here. So it created this subfolder. And we see this. there's a, a, a subfolder to that called secure. And then here, we just have a bunch of, uh, we, we have the file down here and all these subfolders. But it's secure, so it's encrypted. We can't read it. It's not really visible to the user in the app. So usually we recommend uh, external storage for speed and then sa uh, saving that also as a uh, as secure, which would be encrypted. So somebody, if somebody somehow gets access to the file directory, they don't have access to the files on uh, from your app. Uh, do we have any questions at this point? Uh, no, not currently. Okay, uh, so I'll I'll keep going. Let's let's look at uh, manage database again. Look at some more options here. So you'll see it's we've got this folder. Uh, well, we we can say open or uh, secure open. Let's change it to open, and maybe you want to say open, and you can give it a subfolder to your RCC container demo one folder. So we can say maybe this is our general photos folder. So we'll specify that and we'll say okay. Say we'll transfer this. Now one out of one was transferred. Let's go back over here and check this out. So this folder is the same but our secure folder is gone and now we have a subfolder called photos. Now this could be multiple subfolders. So sometimes what we'll see, uh, I haven't actually implemented this myself in an app, but I have seen where they had different folders for different tables. So maybe you had a contacts uh, folder and then uh, items in there. But what you could do here, let's go file, manage, uh, database, and let's give this a primary key. And I'm sorry that I didn't have this on earlier. So I'm going to give it this uh, an ID. And the ID is just going to be something simple like um, uh, REC for record 0001. OK. Now we go to File, Manage, uh, Database. 
And let's go back to this container. We're going to say specify. So first we just selected photos. Now I'm going to say specify and I want it to say photos and then I'm going to put the primary key in here. And uh, there we go. So what's wrong? We need additional uh, ampersand. So here, now we're using a calculation to define where we want this. And now each of the records, so if you had, you could have, if multiple containers reference the same record, you could put all of those containers into one folder uh, if you wanted to, to organize it that way and have access so you could look at your uh, file directory, see a given records uh, uh, container fields and or the items from the container fields and be able to select those if you wanted to. So it is so you can have uh, some interesting control over where those are stored if you're selecting open storage, which is uh, interesting. Uh, let's go ahead back over there and um, we'll select container. Go back to it. So, so we're looking at this. Now let's say you wanted to change maybe, so we, here we're changing the location, but what if we wanted to change the name to it? So right now it says RC let's fly, uh, let's cal, uh, RC let's Calvin fly. Well, I want to denote that that's a photo. So I'm going to say photo colon, actually let's say photo underscore colon and say, okay. I'll select transfer and it saved it. So now you'll notice that it renamed the file. It prefixed the file with photo underscore to, uh, to organize the photos that way. And you could even do this the, um, if we wanted to, uh, let's go back to manage database. So let's go back to specify, and instead of saying just photo, I'm going to say, I want that record ID in there from the primary key to be part of the photo, or part of the name. So let's say okay, we'll save that. And you'll notice when, when I'm doing this, so now it says record number and then underscore the, 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 the file name. So it, you've got a lot of uh, interesting options there that we don't always use, and uh, is especially for renaming a file like that, it's not something that's often used in those uh, in in the scenario. Yeah, I didn't even but know it's good to know that you have it. You can <laughs> be, it can be something static, like uh, denoting it's a uh, photo, or maybe you do an invoice, or it can be something dynamic, uh, where like a, a data from the record itself. Uh, did you have a question? Oh, no, I was just saying I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, I don't see any questions currently. So if you have questions, okay. people ask them. The uh, another thing about this, um, one, one thing that you're noticing that I'm showing you these changes, and it takes uh, a moment to, for those changes to take place in the external date, uh, external container fields. Uh, it's because it's a local file, it's a single record, a single image, and so it's taking, uh, all these actions are happening really fast. If you have something on your server, um, I actually wouldn't recommend messing around with the, those settings uh, since it will take a lot of time to ch make those changes. Usually if we're switching from internal to external, we will take the file off uh, off the server to make that change, and then we'll put it back on the server to uh, to implement it. So, uh, just a, w a word of warning before you start messing around with a hosted file with these settings like this. Okay, let's go back to uh, manage database. And so we we messed around with all of these options up here, but we've got this primary option. Where, how do we change or adjust that? Well, notice, and this has happened to me a couple times that really scared me. Somebody goes into the file director and changes this. I, I, for whatever reason, we don't like this name, so we're just going to say it's RCC containers. I'm just going to say 
all my containers because I have access to this file directory. Uh, now, once I come back over here, have you ever seen this missing and then the, the file name? It's not, we don't know where it is. Uh, a file maker doesn't know where it is. We have to figure out where it is. And this is just because that we've, we've lost that connection between the uh, remote container data and uh, the FileMaker app. And the way to fix that is either changing this folder name back to whatever it was prior, or we go to File, Manage, Containers, File, Manage, Containers. And here we can uh, change the, uh, the, the location of that directory. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and uh, paste in the new one, say OK. Now when I go back over here and say File Manage Containers and try to change it again, it won't let me change it. So it's smart enough to know that there is data in this location and it won't let me make that change because if it does, it will break that connection. Uh, in the past it didn't do that, but this is uh, really nice that it does that now. So now, once I refresh this record, we'll see our data again because it's pointing to the right place. Okay. So the um, do we? So we've talked about uh, internal versus external, uh, the location of the external records, and the um, what is it? And changing the file name with the define field. Uh, settings. Do we have any uh, questions up to this point? Um, nope. Yeah, Ruben just said Colin is nice. I didn't know. Um, you can only rename base directory when it's not running on your server. Uh, sad face. Oh, um, oh okay. The uh, Great. So let's go ahead and the next thing I'd like to look at is interactive versus uh, non-interactive containers. So I only have one container here and we've got some special container settings over here in in our uh, data formatting options. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this and bring it over here and call this one, I'm just changing it to being interactive. Uh, I'm not going to turn the playback automatically. So interactive means that we can uh, the 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 file, we can interact with the file. A PDF, you might be able to scroll through it. A, uh, I didn't get a PDF ready for this presentation, but let's go ahead and, and go to container functions. So I've got some helpful uh, things up here, like in our resources, we've got a get container attribute and get container functions. And so this is just a list of our functions. I'll say print. It's going to be three pages. I'm going to say Say, uh, save as PDF, and I'll just save this to the desktop. There we go. And now let's go ahead and insert that into our, uh, I'm going to say insert PDF. We'll take our PDF, and there's our PDF, and you'll notice this non-interactive uh, container on the left. I can't scroll up and down in the container, and I could just get a thumbnail of the container. While on the interactive container on the right, I can scroll up and down and zoom in, zoom out, and make uh, and, and view view it. You can't uh, edit the uh, container, and but you can if you've got like a Word doc in there. Uh, I, actually, I don't think you can scroll through Word documents, but you can scroll through a PDF. So uh, it it can be a nice uh, interaction there. Sometimes uh, some people don't like how the interactive container works. So they prefer using a like a JavaScript library and a web viewer to display container information. So that's another option that we have. So uh, so that's uh, you, we so we showed uh, the interactive container with a, a PDF. You can also do. Uh, an image. Let's go ahead and say insert file here and I'm going to pick this awesome video. And so this is I'm this is supposed to be 
interactive. I'm supposed to be able to work with this container and it's not, it's not doing anything. This is a, a video. I should be able to, to uh, interact with it and it's, or play the video in my interactive container and it's not really working. Let me try, uh, I'll insert file and use that PDF that we used and that didn't work either. You'll notice we, we can't really, uh, it's, it's not allowing us to, to work with it. And uh, for whatever reason, when we sometimes when we insert data into a container field, FileMaker doesn't recognize it as um, as it, it just shows us this thumbnail that doesn't isn't really helpful. And I, I even think if we say insert file and then select a picture like that the picture we had before, yeah, even that one just gives us a thumbnail. And this is especially uh, something that I run into using an AP APIs. If I use an API to pull an image or a document into FileMaker, this is usually what I get. So we need a way to work with these kinds of containers so that we can see what's in it. It's really helpful to have that thumbnail image, not just the thumbnail icon of the JPEG or video and, and obviously if we have an interactive container we want to in interact with it. So the there's a, a way to to do this and one of the uh, things we can do is using the base64 encode and decode. So I'm going to select this refresh one and so that script right there just refreshed the container and allowed us to see that. Let's try a different one. I'll say insert file. I'll take our awesome video and I'll say refresh once again. And we've got, so here my non-interactive container isn't, it's still displaying the, the icon, but you can notice we can interact now with the interactive container and view that video and, uh, and start playing that and uh, jam along with the song. The, um, so let's, let's take a look at this script and see how that is working. So I'm going to open my scripts and go to the base64 encode decode. So here we are, uh, we're first encoding that container field and so if we look at the base64 uh, encode, we just give it uh, the only parameter is the data. And if we look at the base64 uh, decode, we have a the first the data or first the, the the data to decode, and then we have the file name with extension. So in our calculation up here at the top, you see we're passing it the container and then for the file name we are just giving it the file name from the container itself. Now this is actually a technique that you could use to change the name of a, of a container. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So right now uh, this one, let's go ahead and just add new, uh, we'll call this one container file name and let's go ahead and add this field here. And now when I say that I want to give it a new name, so this is a new name, and in the, in the scripts, what I'll do is just call this one new name. And instead of referencing the function to get the container attribute, I'm going to select the container file name and say OK, save that, and we'll say .mp4. So this is the new name. Let's go ahead and try it out. So you'll notice that the, the video is still there. It's the same video, but we were able to change the, fi the, the file name. And this is really helpful especially if you want to standardize the names of your files, especially if you're generating files in, in FileMaker itself. Um, I, I have one client that has a lot of uh, 
files that they track and they want them all named in a very precise way with a name and a date and a, and a file uh, type, a document type. And so this using a feature like this, we can uh, bring those documents into FileMaker and save them and also change the name so that when we export them from FileMaker to share them, then they are all standardized and easy to, uh, to browse through. Uh, so we just looked at uh, interactive versus standard containers, uh, it, uh, making them uh, go from a just a, a, an, a, an icon to a thumbnail or, or something that we can view a little better in an interactive container. Uh, do we have any questions about those options uh, there? Yes, forgive me if you grabbed it already. We got briefly pulled. Um, why did the interactive aspect stop working from Lynn? Yeah, so the so one of the problems here is that so when, if I say add file and I select a file, this script here, let's go ahead and look at that. I'm saying add file. It's saying insert file. And so it doesn't know what file type that is. But if I say add, in, add photo, and I'm, this script is actually specifying that it's a picture. So uh, because we're using a because it knows it's a picture, it, it generates that that uh, that thumbnail, and uh, it makes that interactive. So, but if we're working with an API, sometimes we don't have that option to insert as a as a um, to insert as a uh, picture, it has to be inserted as a file, so we it, it goes to that thumbnail. The other thing is that some on 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 Apple on uh, on the Mac OS, it generates these thumbnails and these interactive containers uh, a lot better than on Windows. So if you've got multiple people on multiple platforms interacting with the same app, some people upload those uh, containers and they might not display as well, or they might not generate that thumbnail. And then on, you can select those buttons to, uh, to to make it visible. So if I drag and drop this PDF over here, you'll notice that that one worked. But if I say, if I if I use the insert file, then it, it won't. It gives me this this icon. Now, uh, as we that script and that calculation are not really the most elegant for if, if we're using that in a lot of places. So there is a custom function that someone made called interactivate. And that uh, j is, is the same, same technique as this, but it's put in a custom function, which makes it a little easier to implement. And you'll see refresh two is the, using the custom function, and it works just as well. Uh, good question. Uh, any, any other questions? Uh, nope, we've got one about from Ed Burkle about Windows uh, Server and interactive containers, but do you want to do that now or broach that kind of later so you don't um, get off track? Yeah, Windows Server and interactive containers. Let me pull it up the actual question. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Windows Server FMS 19 has external storage of containers currently. Is it possible to move that to AWS S3? And if yes, how difficult? Uh, yeah, so that would be a Jacob question. About to say, I think that's a Jacob the, question, right? Now yeah, that I read so, that, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that, so, and just to kind of give a, a, some uh, context to that, because that's a good question as far as uh, internal versus external containers. Um, we, so it is a good idea to have your external uh, containers on a separate drive. I'm not sure if it's, you can do it with S3, but you can do it on a separate drive, and uh, and it saves uh, on your 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 Amazon costs. And usually, I think it it, it used to it, it's a lot easier than it used to be. And so I think it's pretty standard with our the setups we do. We always put the containers on a separate drive if we know there's going to be a lot of them. Um, and uh, and the, so keeping them in uh, on the same drive is not you. Uh, we don't do that too much anymore. I don't think. 
But that, that's definitely more of a Jacob question. He'd, he'd be able to give you a little more insight there. Okay, uh, any other questions? Um, no, I think we're good for that moment. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, yeah. I. Oh, no, never mind. Not about this. Never mind. Uh, you are good to go. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at some of the some buttons that I like to use when I'm working with uh, containers. So uh, let me go ahead and delete this PDF that I have on my desktop. But some so here I have this interactive container, which is nice, and I can see it. But sometimes I really just want to view the file itself in whatever my default uh, app is for that file. So we've got this button here called view and this view button you'll notice that uh, it just it opened it up and my default app for viewing PDFs is preview so it brought it right up in preview that's really a really slick action here for seeing that um, seeing that that file and if I bring it up in it so this is the same app I'm going to insert a picture Let's say it's this one, and if I say view here, now it brought it up. Oh, it's still preview. Let's try a different thing. Let's say insert. Um, let's insert a. Let's just say insert file. Put our awesome video in. And now when I say view, it's going to. It, it brings it up in what app is this? Is this working? So this time it brings it up. I think this is mono snap. But if your default viewer for an MP4 file was QuickTime, uh, it would bring it up in, in QuickTime. So this is view option for previewing or viewing is really, uh, really nice because it gives you that uh, ability to see the file really fast without having to right click and say export field contents take the place you want, maybe on your desktop, say you save it there and now we need to select it and how many steps was that? That was um, uh, too many steps, I'm not going to count. So uh, having this simple way of opening it up is really, is really nice. So let's look at what that script is doing. And it's a pretty simple one. We've got these standard script settings. We're saving the, uh, the, the file location where we want to put it. And in this case, I'm putting on the temp using a temporary path. So it's saving it in a temporary folder, and it will stay there till you quit FileMaker and open it back up. When that, that, um, that folder is cleared every time you restart FileMaker. And so I'm telling it to store at this location, and I'm telling it the, the name, which I'm just using the whatever name is assigned to it. And so I'm saving that in a variable, and then I'm saying export field contents. And you'll notice that I have automatically open the file uh, checked. So you can, oh, I'm, I'm in, uh, what is it, the, the script debugger, so I can't change these. But the, so here in the work script workspace, we can specify the target field and specify the output field. And you can turn on whether you want this to automatically open or not but in the here. You can also select to have it attached to an email, which is pretty uh, nice if you want a, a quick way to send an email through your default email app. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll leave that there and save this. I don't need to create fo folders. If I, if I wanted to do, I could put it in a folder. Let's say save. So uh, that's one, one nice option that we have. Uh, something Richard likes when he's uh, interacting with any containers in FileMaker and he wants to open it up, he wants it saved automatically to his desktop. So I've got the Save to Desktop button. And you'll notice it automatically put it right there on my desktop. And let's do a different one. We'll say the photo. And so here we say save to the desktop. And you'll notice it, it did open it automatically and it's right there on my desktop. If you don't want it to automatically open, we can just say save to desktop. We'll say instead of automatically opening, we'll just disable the automatically opening. And now when I let's close those, close everything, 
Let's delete this so we can see it come back. So now when I say save to desktop, it saves it to the desktop, but it didn't automatically open. We could also do another one and just say, let's do let's duplicate one of these and say uh, send email. And here, instead of, um, actually, let me do the, I don't want it to save to the desktop, so I'll say send email. And now when I select the output file, I won't say automatically open, but I will say create email with attachment. And now, go ahead and say email. Let's find a nice email icon here. That one looks good. This little narrower. And update this, send email. OK, now when I say send email, thinks about it for a second and then brings up that uh, the, uh, the email with the attachment. So really nice um, options there. Now I have this X button up at the top and that just clears out my container. And once it's got, the container is empty, it disappears. And you'll notice I have all of these graying out. Sometimes it's nice to have a button disappear as I have with this X. And sometimes it's nice just to see those options, but know that they're not available by having that button inactive. And that's just done with conditional formatting. Do we have any uh, questions about viewing, saving to desktop, and saving an email? Uh, any questions about those options there? Nope, I don't currently see any. Uh, yep, nope. <laughs> Ruben has okay. got more of an open-ended question about Claris. Why won't Claris do something? Which is like, eh. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, I yeah, think we're I, good. I don't have any insight on uh, Claris. <laughs> uh, I don't think and, anyone uh, does, Calvin. Uh, in that the, case, okay, so the um, so the I guess the next thing that we can look at is have I I have a question for you guys. Have you ever run into an instance where somebody uploads enormous files that they don't need to upload? For instance, maybe you have a profile picture in your app for the users and they decide to upload this uh, 30 megabyte uh, giant portrait of themselves because it was the fancy one that some photographer took for them and that's the one they want for their profile. And it's just insanely huge and uh, isn't what you're looking for, but it's the photo they want to use. Has, has that ever happened? Or just uploading a, a crazy large file? Anybody has something like that? Some people are typing. Yes, it happened. Okay. So the, this happened with, with a client of mine, and they're like, why is my app running so slow? And it's maybe either your profile picture that loads when you log in is 30 megabytes. So uh, one way that you can handle this is uh, saving an, an extra uh, a copy of it. But you can, uh, as a, sm a smaller copy, but you can actually resize images in uh, FileMaker using uh, calculations. Uh, and you can do this in the auto enter calculation or through a, 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 some glo a global container uh, as well. So let's go ahead and see uh, what we can do here. So one, one feature that we have, uh, calculation, is get thumbnail. So, uh, so let's go ahead and look at this in the data viewer. Where'd my data viewer go? So we can say get, oh, sorry, get thumbnail. And here we can define the field, that'd be the container, the width and the height. So if you want to re limit them to say, okay, it can only be 100. This is a profile picture. It doesn't need to be more than 100 by 100 pixels. And let's say the container, and we can say evaluate, uh, let's just say, we're going to copy this. And if it's a give, if it's a specific fi uh, field that is always going to be that, uh, we can save this as an auto enter calculation. I'm just going to say self. And it's important to have this do not replace existing value if this is the technique you're going to use 
we're using auto enter calculation. So here uh, we're, we're back in browse mode now. You'll notice this file is pretty large. It's 11 megabytes. I'm going to say this one is 11 megabytes. So we can kind of see that right there. I'm going to drag and drop it in here. And you'll notice now it's tiny. So I can say view. Uh, you'll, it's very small now. I'll say save to desktop. We'll give it a new. We'll give it a new name. How about that? We'll call it uh, how big. We're not sure. And we'll use uh, one of these. Save to desktop. Oh, and it over. So it already did save to the desktop, and it's the smaller of the smaller of them. So there is, so, so we're, we're resizing it right there. We can also use that same calculation in a, uh, in a, what is it called? In a script. So if, if you don't want it to apply it everywhere. So in this case, it's going to be, be applied to every uh, container field. Maybe you only want it applied sometimes. So we can say, uh, make uh, or say resize as thumbnail. We'll give it some new script and we'll just say new resize as thumbnail. We'll just say set field specify and we're saving the same field there. And maybe let's let's make this a little larger. The 100 was a little smaller than I expected. Let's do 400 by 400. So now, if I say add photo, we'll grab the large one again, 11 megabytes, and save that. We'll say resize as thumbnail, and now it's it's still large enough that we can that it fills up that that layout and say save to desktop. And you'll notice now the size is 42 uh, kilobytes, so much smaller. And as far as you're viewing in this size of a container, it, it's about the same. It, it, you can't really tell the difference looking at it. What, uh, how, how big that that image is uh, for 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 use in the app. Uh, do we have any questions about uh, resizing using the get thumbnail? Um, nope, just Rubens. A couple people saying, "Oh, it's a neat solution." <laughs> okay. And, so. and one thing to point out here, if if this is if if resizing is something you're doing a lot, you'll want to first save that. At, you don't want uh, when you're you're using an auto enter calculation or a script in this case, uh, e either case, you're having to upload the full file to the server, then it resizes. If you don't need to do that, you might put it first, have a dialog where you add it to a global field, so it's not so it's saved locally, and then uh, be, the the script will resize it and save it into that uh, the, the the final destination. And once it's in that that final field, you're only saving the the small version of it, so it's not the entire thing isn't uploaded to the server. Uh, but okay. Uh, sometimes also we'll have uh, multiple. In, I know in Nick Hunter's app for the the gallery, his gallery app, he has multiple container fields uh, with different thumbnail sizes to display the images. Okay. Uh, any other questions at that point? Um. Uh, no, not really, just kind of some comments. I don't see other oh. questions currently. Okay. Well, if we'd like to continue, we can look at some more. Um, one, of, one interesting thing is the different options for a get container attribute that you can pull from, uh, from a container field. So I think that would be that. interesting. We've got 15 minutes, so why not? Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this. So get container attribute, it, we used this once earlier on in the in this uh, session where we were getting the file name but there's a lot of other things you can get from that uh, from that 
information. And you'll scrolling through here, you can see all of these all these options, including latitude and longitude, which is interesting, and uh, and such. So let's go ahead and take a look at the this with the data viewer. Let's say data viewer, and let's get container. Actually, this is yeah. So we'll say get container attribute. We're doing the uh, container and what attribute name do we want to see? So we can see here, first thing we saw was the file name. And so there's our file name. And we can also see storage type, so that's helpful. So we can see if this, this is external and open, but we can also see if it was external and secure, embedded, I was once working on an app that everything was embedded and, uh, and th there, there was, or it seemed like everything was embedded. Uh, some things were, some things were, um, what is it, were, had been fixed and were no longer embedded, but having that option is really helpful to see the status of your data, uh, whether it's a file reference or text. Um, you can get the file size, so here we go, file, size, and I should have saved a, there's a nice custom function that Nick put together that makes this a little more legible. So it, right now it's just saving in bytes, but the, uh, there's a custom function to show uh, how many, that converts this into megabytes, gigabytes, et cetera. One thing to note also, a little bit of trivia, is the limit to the largest size of a, of a file you can put in the container field is four gigabytes. So four gigabytes is the limit. Um, so there's a file size. I'm not sure what internal size is. Internal. And the, uh, uh, the space inside the database that the file occupied. So you could use something like this to identify which um, what, what, what's taking up too much space, which maybe some, uh, what's taking up a lot of space in your app. You can get the width and height, and yeah, you can get the DPI width and height, transparency if that is something. I don't think there's any transparency on this one, so what, what, what will we get? What will return uh, zero. Uh, you can get the note, if there is a note. Let's see if there's a note on this one. And there's no note. So the one thing that's helpful, the some some people ha, save a bunch of stuff in the uh, notes in their files, which is interesting. We ran into that one time. They the client had a file directory that they wanted to move into FileMaker for better searching and organization, but. And they want it was really important that they carried over the notes that they had saved in the uh, the files themselves. So we use something like this to bring those and put set them in file meter fields so that they could browse and search in them. So we got the orientation, uh, the create when it was created or modified. I guess it, let's see what this brings up. It's not in there. You can do uh, you can get the for photos. You can get a bunch of information on the how the photo was taken audio you can get the uh, all of the um, audio information that you would see like in iTunes and such uh, there's barcode options uh, signature timestamp and then general uh, options so if we type in general here I believe this is the one that shows us a bunch of details so here you get just a, a bunch of details that you can go through and uh, look at what the data is about that, and uh, which is pretty cool. We say image, I think we get another option here too. So then that gives us all our image data. And so we can also say all, get everything that we, uh, that there might be for the photo. And you'll see some of the data is blank, but a bunch of other stuff is still there. So that's kind of an overview of the um, get container attribute. I mostly use it for grabbing the file name. 
Uh, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Uh, does this include the metadata in photos? Uh, I believe the, this would be the metadata, the width, the height, and we can get the orientation, creation, modification, latitude, longitude, make model of the, the camera. Is there more data you would want? You can see uh, the uh, all the data that that there is that is available in this link, which is going to be in that in that uh, sample file that we can share with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Canberra is typing a follow-up, so I think he'll see either the question has been answered or there's something else he's looking for. Uh, David just remarked that for a FAT32 file system, 4 gigs uh, is the limit size of a file. So. All right. Anything uh, else? I don't think so. Sh oh, shutter speed aperture. Uh, oh, I, I didn't see that as options in the uh, in this link, but you can no. see, look at the the clearest help, and we'll have all of the details in there for you. Okay, well that that's a, my demo going over some some base, basic uh, container features and how to set them up and how to some different options for saving them internally, externally, changing the 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 file, name, and uh, scripting with them. Uh, I'll post it into Discord shortly, Canberra. So, uh, people are still typing, but thank you very much, Calvin. This has been fantastic. I think that these basic overviews are needed, especially for people... There are still new people new to the platform, and I recognize people I've never seen before pop in today. So, uh, yeah, Ruben said learn some new stuff. Yep. Very important people learn the basics. Uh, so... Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to run the music if, you, if you're good, Calvin. I'm good. Excellent. Happy uh, Friday. Have a good weekend. Have a good free weekend, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>